Hi, in this video, we're going to talk about hearing God's voice. Now, this is something that for me was a huge myth buster, and maybe it was for you too, because I was never taught, nor did I believe that I could actually hear God's voice, anything outside of his word. But in this video, you're going to learn three simple things you can do, and you can do them right now to begin to hear God's voice for yourself and start to hear his heart for you and move forward in your faith. If you're stuck, you can get unstuck today, right now with these simple tricks. Now, before we go to the three simple tricks, I was 12 when I first started my relationship with Jesus. And I always, always, always heard his voice in his word. I'd open up his word, I would read and the the word, the message would actually come off the page. There would be a scripture or a word or even a whole paragraph. It would sort of lift off the page and it would touch my heart. And, and in my mind, I would sort of think like God is talking to me through his word because one particular thing stood out more than anything else. And that is exactly how we hear God's voice. First and foremost, we always hear God's voice in his word. But did you know there are other ways that we hear God's voice? And that's what we're going to talk about today. So you can hear his voice in a song that touches your heart. Maybe there's a lyric or a, a chorus. You can hear God's voice in um, a talk that someone's giving. Maybe something stands out to you there and just really moves your heart. And you can even hear God's voice in something you read, like a devotion or a book on your faith. So there are other ways of hearing God's voice outside of simply reading scripture, which is not like simply, but it's a huge way that we can hear God's voice, but it's not the only way. And that is the myth we're going to bust today. So first of all, the first tip with hearing God's voice is to understand that we can. Now, John 10 says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me and they know me. So we're not like Mary had a little lamb sheep, but we are followers of Jesus. And that's what he's referring to. He's referring to us as followers, that we do know his voice and we follow him. So if you're struggling today hearing God's voice, then you're in the right place and this is for you. And you're going to love this because in about two minutes, you're going to be able to hear God's voice for yourself. So now that we believe and we understand like we can hear God's voice for ourselves, how do we do that? Well, I like to begin with thanksgiving, praise, and worship, because that kind of gets rid of the thousand other things that are jingling around in my head. Now, I like to begin with thanksgiving, praise, and worship, because that helps me get rid of the million things that are running around in my head and just set them aside. I like to think about putting them right on a shelf and focusing on God. So I start with thanksgiving. I thank him for the things that he's done for me, um, the, thing, the places that I live, the things that he has given me, the opportunities to do things like share encouraging words with other people. I thank him for those things. And when I'm thanking him for those things, I'm not thinking about all those things I put on the shelf to think about later. And then after Thanksgiving, you see, because um, scripture says, I think it's Psalm 100. Psalm 100 says, we enter his gates with thanksgiving and we enter his courts with praise. So I always imagine kind of entering through a gate into like a field or a courtyard. And I come in and I'm like, God, thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for my home and, and my amazing husband. Thank you that I have technology and an opportunity to come online and share encouragement with people. Thank you for that. Thank you for loving me so much, for being such a good dad and taking care of my needs and giving me opportunities and wanting the most for me. Thank you for those things. And then I'll start praising him. I praise you because you are a good dad. You know, one of his names is Abba and Abba means father. And so I will start praising Abba, praise you. I thank you. I praise you that you are a good dad. You are worthy of my love because I can only love you because you loved me first. I praise you as for being a good dad. And I worship you in your goodness. You see, God, the, God's word then says um, in 1 Chronicles 16, 
that worship, we ascribe our worship to the Lord. Ascribe means just to declare and, and, and give honor to a certain characteristic of God. So we enter his gates with thanksgiving, we enter his courts with praise, and then we worship him for who he is. So God, you are good. I worship you because you're good. You are never changing. You are the same from the beginning to the ending. So that means you're always good. There's never a moment that you're not good. And I thank you and I worship you for that. So see, now I've taken about a minute and I've totally let those distracting thoughts go aside and I'm focused on him. So my heart is ready to hear from him. So in that moment, before I have a chance to pick anything off of that distraction shelf, I ask God, God, what is your heart for me? And I go with that first word, that first thought that runs across my brain. Because you see, scripture also says that God knows our thoughts before we think them. So if I'm in my thoughts and I'm thinking, God, what is your heart for me today? And the first thing I hear is cherished. I cherish you. I love you. You're like my, my closest possession. That's what I see. I see a, a little pocket, you know, that, that's right on his shirt. And, and he keeps me close to his heart. You see, in that moment, we can hear God most clearly because we've gotten rid of distracting thoughts and we thank, we've gone through thanksgiving and praise and worship. And now we're ready to hear his heart for us. And then I might ask him another question. What is your heart for today? What is the one thing that you think ha absolutely has to get done? Because I might have 12 on my list, but I want to know what's the impor most important thing on God's heart for me to get done today. See, you are body, soul, and spirit. And your soul, your mind, and your emotions, and your will is the place that's closest to connected to your spirit and therefore it's your soul it's in your mind and your heart it's where we hear god's voice and so you can be very confident that when you ask him a question in your mind you're going to hear his answer okay so the third tip is how do we know it's god's voice well i like to say yes you do have voices in your head you have three you have yours you have god's and you also have what we'll call just the enemy. See, the devil can't control you, but he can suggest thoughts that you might come into agreement with and then act upon. So we have actually three different voices that could be speaking to us. So how do we know when it's God's? Well, if God is a good God, which we believe he is, and the Bible says he is, then he would never speak anything to his child that's negative or destructive or demeaning. So God's voice is always going to come with words that are encouraging and loving and almost too good to be true. Because when we ask for God's heart for us, he's going to tell us what he's dreaming of for us in this day, in this moment, how he sees us. And that's what we want to hear. And that's where it just could be too good to be true. Is it so good that the God, the creator of the universe, loves me so much that he wants to shower me and my life with good things? That's pretty good. But if it's not bringing me peace and it's not positive, um, if it's condemning, that's not going to be from God. That's going to be from the devil, from the enemy, trying to get me to believe something that is not true. And I simply get to choose. My voice in there gets to say, God, I think that's you speaking. Would you tell me again? And God's going to be right there to tell you again. You see, the devil doesn't know your thoughts before you think them, but God does. And so God will start to answer those questions even before you've gotten the whole statement out. He's kind of, inter of, an, he's kind of an interrupter like that. So ask the question and then go with that first thought and test the fruit on that. Is it good? Is it positive? Does it make me feel good? Is it encouraging me? Is it loving? And if it is, then just take it and keep it as yours. 
ask him again, tell me some more. Why is it that you love me so much? What's the thing you love the most about me? But if it's not, then throw it away and ask him again. God, I don't believe that was you. Ask me again. I'm still listening. Because you're still in this space that your thanksgiving, praise, and worship walked you into. And so you can ask him again and you can stay in the space and stay there until you hear from him. But I can guarantee you because every time we've done this with people, they hear God, if not the first time, then the second time. And I strongly recommend, my third tip is, write it down. Keep a journal of what God says to you, who he says you are, what his heart for you is, what his heart for this season is. Because that's when we start to really get traction in our life and faith. Because hearing God's voice brings us confidence. If I'm going into a challenging conversation that I know is coming up that day, I say, God, what is your heart for this conversation, for me, for them? Because God is always working. And then we start to catch a vision for God's heart for that conversation. And everything can change because now it can be fruitful instead of destructive. So here are your three tips. Uh, believe that God wants you to hear his voice and that he wants to have conversation with you. Get your distracting thoughts put aside by thanksgiving, praise, and worship. And then ask him his heart for you and write that down. Those are your three tips. And you see, you can start right now by doing that. And I hope you will post in the comments below what your thoughts are. Make sure you hit subscribe and the little notification bell for when we post more videos. Have a great day. Be blessed. We love you.